subject of the day is by Brassavola Cordata Sun Ying. Huh. Might as well update here on the Brassavola tubercolata that I've put into sponge rock. I'm not seeing any decline of the roots. The ones on the edge are peeking out. Am I going to use this for my Brassavola cordata? I don't know yet. But it's been in here for three years. It's time it has to come out. And it's growing new roots as well on the new growth. So I'm going to go in and then see what's going on in the pot, whether it's going back into Lekka or something like this. So that was a bit of a rushed how do you do. Sorry about that. Hi. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. Really appreciate you joining me. And I hope that we can come to some kind of a sensible conclusion for the future of this orchid. It's been doing well, but you know, they're slow growers, brassabonas in my case, because my winters drop down so low, they would prefer it much, much nicer if my temperatures weren't as low during the winter. And hello, you can tell uh-huh, little squeeze and that pot crack. But anyway, having said all that, it's been in here three years. Time to get it out and see how we can make it better. Yeah, okay. Brassavolas. Funky little traits they have. They dump their roots, if in a pot. And especially when it comes to my grow method. Lekka and self-watering. So, now that I have come to that conclusion after having repotted quite a few of them, not just the species, but also the hybrids, anything with Brassavola in it as a hybrid, as a direct parent, not one that has some kind of Brassavola down the line, but a direct parent, a direct hybrid, and you will have these attributes. Anyway, I am not too disappointed. I know this looks really bad. I do. Uh, I admit that this looks pretty, pretty awful, but the roots are firm and here you can still there's, see there's substance in them. So I will go back into Lekka. We do have some cleanup to do, but <sighs> looks aren't everything. <laughs> They're still functional. So let me make sure that I take my time over this, despite being distracted with what's going on back there. I have everything prepared pretty much for a lecker setup, with the exception of what size lecker that I want to use. And I'm very, very tempted to go with small, even though they might not like my setup. Maybe the lecker was too large and I should use smaller lecker. But sometimes you get Brassavola roots that aren't happy when they get dry. And if I'm on, on top of the flushing, as I should be, and miss maybe a flushing sequence because it is in the back of a shelf, I get distracted and time goes by and then the pot can go dry. That is not a good thing, especially when it comes to Brassavola roots. They like, once they grow, they have to be maintained. They have to keep growing. Otherwise you will lose them. But age will also do that. So let's get rid of age. As long as the roots are in the back that are dead, I'm fine. I have always found Brassavola roots to be different, to have a different kind of a characteristic in growing, whether mounted or potted. It's all about humidity for these guys. Very, very careful because I've got root tips. Feed that back. Where did you come from? Let's not go all the way back, but let's go to where we could actually see and feel it. How far gone are you? All the way back. So you see, I'm okay. I've got only old roots failing. And she has only ever given me one growth per year. So I'm not even worried about the lack of vigor with only one growth. But uh, this was her first growth when she arrived to me. Came here a little bit kinked. Clearly not enough hydration. 
looks like a little baby heron bird. <laughs> That's so cute. Um, yes, and then the next growth along here. And it bloomed, and this one bloomed this year. And now we're on our next growth. So she's doing all right. The setup is okay. But I am going with small Lekka when it comes time to potting her up. Okay, this one's gone all the way to the back. This one's only gone up to here. Let's have a look. No, it's gone all the way to the back. So we'll take it. So I was mistaken at the beginning. I thought, hey, they're firm, even though they're black. But they have a firm, gone texture to them. They're not in any way, shape or form squishy. But that's all there is to it. This was relatively simple. See that we protect the roots, the root tips from any kind of abrasion with the lecker as we pour it in. Let's get everything submerged and floating. How low can we go? Oh, by the way, yes, I am also not cutting anything off the back. I suppose I could make it a little bit more tidy, but this orchid already has such skinny structures until it doesn't absorb itself in the back. That is still some energy back there. And I'm going to take advantage of that. Same size pot, clearly no need to make any difference with that regard. Just want to make sure that I know how much lecker should I put in at the bottom first. None, it's fine. I want to be poking around on those roots. You see how that lecker also goes under the loop? can jiggle it a little bit, encourage it a little bit, just by using the water potting up method, that lecker falls under the loop on its own. Can I let go yet? Yes, I can. Let's help it along a little bit. So my thought here is smaller lecker because this orchid requires a lot of humidity in its growing phase, which is always the hottest months of the year. And then in the, in the winter, I only just tied them over by keeping the microfiber damp and flushing them through ever so often, not letting the lecker dry out. But that is not its active growth period. So I'm gonna get away with maybe missing the mark of not getting to it soon enough and hopefully more aggressive root growth that doesn't just stop at a certain level. Really, that's what I'm looking out for when I do this water potting up method, these root tips. They won't get bashed. The support is only there now to hold the orchid in place, not because I need to train the growths. The growths, as you can see, are going really well because I've got the light source from behind the orchid, so they go upright into the pot. So it's only there to hold the orchid in place now while it's getting established again. I'm gonna leave the back a little bit free and clear because that back rhizome is very buried. So leave some more air around that. And I'm gonna leave the front also relatively free of lecker because I would like the roots to grow into the pot and not get abrasions or any of that dry top layer effect that I have in my climate and have the root tips stopping growing. So let's get in there. 
and get this chunk of lecker out and away from that root tip, like so. See how there's a nook in there, a little hollow? That's where it's going for, and then it'll be fine, and then I can fill up around with lecker once that is all done. Right now, all the roots that were used to being in a very wet environment are in a very wet environment, and everything is as per usual. She had a soak of seaweed, calcium, and magnesium prior to being unpotted. And because we didn't use any hydrogen peroxide, I'm going to leave some of that in the reservoir. This is 40 parts per million of seaweed, 60 parts per million of calcium magnesium. And then I'll be absolutely fine also several times a day, depending on how the temperatures are and how much wind I've got. I'm okay now to miss the bottom here and keep this nice and humid as well to encourage the roots to go down because this growth is now big enough. I won't risk any rot happening down here. Thank you very, very much for watching. Always, always appreciate your company, your time. Leave me any comments, even if it's just to say hi. Love hearing from you. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.